Namaskar and welcome to the audiovisual program of Krishnakanta Handikoi State Open University. I am Dr. Juri Hazarika, Assistant Professor of Bhupen Hazarika School of Mass Communication of the University. And I am Dr. Trisha Dora Borwa, uh, Assistant Professor from the Bhupen Hazarika School of Mass Communication, Krishnakanta Handik State Open University. And today we have uh, brought to you this discussion on the occasion of World Radio Day which is celebrated on 13th February every year all around the world. Right. So I mean, when we talk about World Radio Day, what does we, it refers to? Basically, it talks about the importance of radio in the present day context. And the theme for this year's edition of the World Radio Day is devoted to radio and trust. Now, uh, the beginning of the World Radio Day it stems from the United Nations Radio, which was established on the 13th of February 1946. And the date was therefore a very natural choice to celebrate this mass medium. World Radio Day was proclaimed at UNESCO's General Conference in 2011 following an initial proposal by Spain. And it was unanimously approved the following year by the United Nations General Assembly, which declared it a uh, United Nations International Day. Now, why do we need to create a separate day for radio? Because radio is a low cost and popular medium which can actually reach the remotest areas of the world and the most marginalized people. It thereby continues to broadcast when other media are out of action for emergency communications or following a natural disaster. Finally, it is a medium that has been able to fully embrace the technical developments such as broadband and digital audio broadcasting and to adapt to mobile devices. It actually, it continues to be one of the most trusted and used media in the world, according to the different international reports. And this year's team, as I've already said, revolves on a radio and trust, and which is again divided into three main sub-themes. The first is the trust in radio journalism. Basically, the trust in radio journalism, this area, it talks about how to produce independent and high-quality content. While respecting the basic standards of ethical journalism has become challenging in the present high-tempo digital age. However, in order to keep or raise listeners' trust, journalism must continue to be based on verifiable information that is shared in the public interest and that also holds the powerful to account and helps society to build a better future for all. The second most important sub-theme which this year's team revolves around is trust and accessibility. That is, to take care of the target audience. While reaching out to selected audience group implies serving the informational needs of all listeners and being a catalyst for integration and social participation, including persons with disabilities. And digital radio platforms provide grounds for innovations in the accessibility of content for the latter such as the use of sign languages or automated subtitles for hearing impaired audience when streaming. The third most important subdivision of this year's team revolves around trust and viability of radio stations. In other words, this particular sub team talks about or discusses how to remain in a competitive pool. How can, can we ensure competitiveness? There are few questions that really comes to our mind when we talk about this particular area. That is, how can radio actually survive when financial crisis hits the mar media market? How to transform loyal audience engagement into financial sustainability? So, uh, since we are celebrating this special day, for, uh, especially for radio, so let us now understand what actually radio is. So, it is one, uh, one of the channels or medium of mass communication. We know what mass media is, isn't it? Mass media can be uh, divided into different uh, categories which comprises of print media and electronic media. And when we say electronic media, we are talking about radio and television. And radio is one of the earliest forms of electronic media. Radio solely depends on sound and hence it is also called as the audio medium or it is also known as uh, the blind medium. Audio means of sound or of the reproduction of sound. So specifically, it refers to the range of frequencies which is detectable by the human ear. 
and which is approximately 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz so now we know that radio is a very important medium of mass communication it it is all per it has an all pervasive uh, all pervading uh, presence in our lives and it reaches out to almost every nook and corner of the world okay, it has a very uh, wide reach and access radio can be listened at home while driving and also while at work because it is just about the sound the sound it helps uh, people in you know carrying out the day to day life of uh, one's uh, you know day to day activities of one's life radio helps in reproducing the different rhythms of the day you know uh, when uh, in the morning we come across the chirpy uh, tunes which are played in the radio and the evening hours we can listen to the you know musical uh, the laid back musical tones in the uh, you know different radio programs so hence it you know uh, the radio can uh, actually touch the uh, people in a deeper level now radio is a very immediate form of mass media we can get uh, we can get the updates on the breaking news as soon as it happens in the society the different weather forecast and the latest road traffic reports all these can be you know uh, all these can be uh, listened to on the radio so uh, again i have already mentioned here that radio is very intimate and it is a very personal medium of communication because it touches the audience at a personal level through its different music uh, the words and uh, the, the radio presenter also has a very important role in this regard because the radio presenter touches each and every individual who is listening to the radio through, uh, through his or her words and the voice. The voice is hence a very important component of the audio medium. So radio establishes a very close relationship with its audience as I have already mentioned because it is a very conversational medium. Radio is by far the most portable means of mass communication. Uh, we are here not talking about the new media forms. If we are only talking about the traditional forms of media, uh, as compared to the print or television, uh, the radio can be carried with the person. You know, you, you can carry it along with you whenever, wherever you travel. And hence, it is very portable and hence very useful as well. Radio is the cheapest of all media forms because our radio transistor is uh, quite cheaper as compared to the television set and other uh, modern tools of communication. Uh, so I'm, uh, you know, now Dr. Trisha will explain the types of radio post broadcasting to you. Thank you, Juri. I think um, a discussion on own radio day would not be complete without understanding the different types of radio broadcasting. Now, we often talk about the radio broadcasting, different kinds of programs, different kinds of uh, transmission channels and all. There's very technicalities involved in this entire process. Now, let me talk about radio broadcasting. Uh, from a layman's point of view, it's nothing but it's just a transmission of audio, that is sound, and sometimes with relatable or related metadata by radio waves to radio receivers belonging to a public audience. As far as our terrestrial broadcasting is concerned, the radio waves are broadcast by land-based radio station, while in satellite radio, the radio waves are broadcast by satellite in Earth orbit. Now, uh, there are two very common forms of, you know, radio broadcasting techniques or technologies that uh, we can commonly refer to. They are the AM and FM, that is amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. Now. AM radio stations or amplitude modulator radio stations are transmit in AM format, okay, while FM radio stations are transmitted in FM format. Where FM are basically their older analog radio or audio standards, while new digital radio stations are transmit in several digital audio standards like DAB which is a digital audio broadcasting, HD radio, DRM that is digital radio mondial. And AM stations, they were earlier broadcasting stations which were developed and slowly the AM stations were replaced by the FM stations. Then let us understand, this is not a type of radio broadcasting but it is just a part of you know uh, one of the new trends or maybe you can say one of the different uh, forms of broadcasting radios. It is known as a pirate radio. 
Now from the term itself, uh, we can make out when we talk about pirate radio, it is it's something, uh, it is a non-regulated radio transmission, that there is no regulation involved in this kind of transmission. And this is mostly uh, used to describe the illegal broadcasting for entertainment or political purposes. And uh, sometimes uh, it is also used for illegal two-way radio operation. So, uh, and if you look at the historical overview, if you try to trace the history of pirate radio, uh, it can be traced back to the unlicensed nature of the transmission, um, but historically there has been, you know, occasionally used in most of the sea vessels, like, you know, whenever the uh, ships they sail in the high sea area, they try to, you know, transmit certain uh, intimate, certain some kind of informations, you know, uh, to some other persons maybe outside the country also. So, it illegally they try to transmit the different transmissions. Then uh, we can also talk about one of the form of you know, important radio broadcasting technique is a terrestrial digital radio. Now uh, digital radio broadcasting at first emerged in Europe and uh, from then on later on it spread to different other countries, the United States, France, Netherlands, South Africa and many other South Asian countries as well. And uh, the simplest system is named DAB digital radio for digital audio broadcasting. And it basically uses a public domain Eureka 147 system, that is band 3 system. What an, you know, uh, a form of radio broadcasting, you can say that is a community radio. So, from the term itself, we can make out community radio is intended to serve the community for, uh, you know, a discussion on different community related issues. And it is basically, uh, it it's a third model of radio broadcasting in addition to the commercial and other public service broadcasting. And uh, community stations they basically serve the geographic communities and communities of interest. Uh, the content that is broadcast is very much popular and very much relevant in the present day context and usually relates to the local uh, specific audience but it is also open, often it is overlooked by commercial or mass media broadcasters. And uh, when we, uh, no, basically there are two philosophical approaches to community radio. When we talk about models or approaches. You know, one particular approach is that uh, it tries to, you know, kind of the community radio focuses on what the station can actually do for the community as a whole. Now, on the other hand, the other approach is that that involvement of the community for the you know radio uh, broadcasting purposes. Okay, they can actually invite the community to come to the radio station, and they they give the opportunity to the community as a whole to you know discuss a variety of issues for the benefit of the community and which can actually help in the holistic development of the society in the long run. Now uh, when we are talking about community radio, there is you know a very interesting exchange and knowledge sharing basis also going on. Like Indian government has been you know promoting content exchange especially for radio programs and good practices, the different case studies are there to facilitate a very meaningful discussions as well as utilization of the whatever resources is there. Like in the you know past couple of like 10 to 12 years like the the, uh, the Ministry of Information Broadcasting and the Government of India, they have actually promoted the Ek Dunya Anek Awaz uh, which is basically an audio and knowledge exchange portal for community radio practitioners uh, more specifically in the South Asian region and uh, this, this particular portal was launched in the year 2008. And uh, this particular portal, this service is, uh, it has uploaded a numerous uh, radio, you know, content for various radio stations. You know, one can listen to any uh, songs or any content uh, starting from North India to South India to East to West, so any part of the country which actually have a lot digitalized content from different radio stations, more specifically from community radio, radio stations.